persistent and powerful Python programmers. This is Prof G. Are you prepared to crank out tremendous tunes, engineer an engaging instrument? Well, that's what's in store in this Circuit Python School lesson. We're going to learn to play tunes using a microcontroller. We'll do that by using PWM to produce audio tones. We will learn a new skill along the way, how to Pythonically iterate through sequences rather than using a range to iterate on an index. And we'll play all 12 notes in the middle music octave. Then we'll leverage our earlier learning from the capacitive touch lesson using the MPR-121 breakout to build a one octave capacitive touch piano. We'll demonstrate how to do this on our Arduino Nano RP2040. This build should be similar to most CircuitPython boards, but if you're using an Adafruit Cutie Pie RP2040, We'll show you how to set that up and code the differences at the end of this lesson. So let's play! Now we're going to be producing sound using PWM, and we've mentioned PWM very briefly in earlier videos, but here's a quick overview. So analog signals can vary, while digital signals can only be one or zero. Computing devices are really good at digital, ones and zeros, not so much with analog. Now PWM, which is pulse width modulation, allows us to fake an analog signal by rapidly toggling ones and zeros or high or low values, like this diagram here. The nicely curved sine wave is meant to represent an analog signal, and over here we've got an approximate approximation of the sine wave by varying our one and zero pulses. Now PWM can be used to brighten or dim an LED by rapidly turning power on or off. Rapid on and offs can also control the speed of a motor. And we can use PWM to play tones. And to do this, we're going to control three values. Frequency, that's the number of fluctuations we'll have in a period. Now frequency will produce the note, so middle C or C4 for example has a frequency of 440 hertz. We'll also use duty cycle to control the volume of our tones, and we'll also add a duration. This will control the time the tone plays, and this will give us the length or beat of a note. Now in this example, we'll play the middle octave, and I'm not really a musician, but the middle octave starts at middle C, sometimes that's called C4, and it goes through the letter notes to G, and then starts with A and B again. And the black keys can be called either flats or sharps. Now we're gonna produce all of the sounds in the middle octave using PWMIO, so we're gonna import the PWMIO library, then we're going to use this library to create a PWM out object. And you could call this anything, but I'm going to call mine tone. And I'm going to be showing the same wiring that I showed in the earlier video where we played wave and mp3 files. And in that video, I attached a speaker that had a standard RCA jack and I clipped ground to the sleeve of that jack and I clipped audio out to the tip. And in this demo, I'm working with an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect, and the tip of my audio out is attached to pin D3. If you're using a build where the audio is set to a different pin, change that here. Now, the way that we play tones is to change the frequency of our PWM out object, and different frequencies mean different notes. And in order to be able to vary the frequency of this object, when we declare this object, we need to set the variable underscore frequency parameter equal to true. And unfortunately, there's no way to control the speaker volume from CircuitPython, but we can fake this by accessing and changing the PWM out object's duty underscore cycle parameter. Now, duty cycle values range from 0 to 65,520. Half of that, or about 32,760, will give you full volume. Lower than that will lower the volume. Greater than half will also lower the volume, but it'll introduce a clicking in the speaker, so ignore the higher values. Now, for my simple hamburger speaker, the volume is painfully loud. So when working in my home lab, I actually set the volume to only 25, a very small number. Feel free to experiment with that value if you need to. Now down here I have a list of 12 integers in a list called notes. Now these are the frequencies for the 12 notes that you'll find in the middle octave of a conventional piano. So the first value at index 0 is middle C, sometimes called C4, and that has a frequency of 262 hertz. D flat or C sharp is 277 hertz, D is 294, all the way up to B, which is 494. So when we want to play a given note in the piano, starting at middle C and counting left to right, we just play that index value on our list. Now tone underscore duration sets the length of time for each tone we're going to play. I'm going to use just two tenths of a second in this demo, but feel free to change that, and you can vary that when calling the function we'll introduce below. And I'm going to set a very short rest underscore duration of just one one hundredth of a second, but feel free to change this too. Now I've also written two functions that you can reuse to play notes or rests, and the rests are the time between the notes. So play a tone takes two values, a frequency, which is the note, and the duration, which is the length of time we should play that note for. Now the first line here turns up the volume, Now that's because we might have turned the volume off to produce the rests or the spaces between the notes, and that's usually the case. So make sure you turn the volume on, then we're going to play the note by setting the frequency of our PWM out object, which we call tone. 
and then we carry that note for a given length of time by sleeping for the duration of the note. Now the function down here, player rest, takes one parameter duration, it turns off the duty cycle so that nothing is playing, and then it waits for the duration, which is the length of time that we don't want to play any sounds. Now this code doesn't have a while true loop to avoid playing things over and over again. This loop will only execute once, and then our code is going to end. But it will play all 12 notes, and I do that by going through all the frequencies in the notes list. Now you might notice that this for loop looks different from some of the other loops that we've written. Now normally we go through a range of integers, but here we don't have a range. We're just referring to a list of notes. So what gives? Well, this is the code that we've seen before. We see the range as a length of a list. In this case, it's the length of notes or LEN of notes. That number is 12 in this case. So we would go through the number zero up to, but not reaching 12. So we'll stop at 11. And this code works. Now the code down here iterates through a sequence, which in our case is a list, and that list is called notes. So the value note is an element of the list notes. This statement says go through every element of notes, that sequence, and put each element into the value note one at a time as you go through the loop with each iteration. So in this case, instead of getting the index value, we actually get the value of the element itself, 262, 277, all the way up to 494. Cool. Now, which approach should you use? Well, it's up to you. Iterating through an array would be considered more Pythonic, and it involves thinking directly about the element rather than the index of the element. So most programmers would probably prefer this. But in a lot of the code that we wrote earlier, we actually used our index value to access different lists inside of the for loop. For example, when we made a drum machine with a circuit playground, we got the index of our touchpads, but we also use that index to play both the drum sounds and to access the colors associated with the touchpad that was touched. So in cases like that, you definitely want the index value and you would use that approach. If you don't need the index value, then this one is usually preferred. But either one works exactly the same. But Python programmer, now you know both of these techniques, iterating using an index and iterating through a sequence. And by the way, this iteration technique also works on other sequences too, like tuples. So now let's code up this example and we'll add a fun challenge at the end. So we're gonna play notes using a microcontroller and we're gonna import time, comma board, comma PWMIO, and then we're gonna set up our PWM out object. We'll call that tone. We'll set that equal to PWMIO dot PWM out. That's with the PWM and the O all in caps. Then in parentheses board dot D3. Remember to change this if you've clipped the tip of your audio jack to another pin, then comma variable underscore frequency equals true. Then I'll create a variable called volume and set that equal to 25. And the way that we're going to change the volume of our speaker is we'll set tone.duty underscore cycle equal to volume. And just as a note, 32,768 is full volume, and anything less than that lowers the volume. Then we'll set up the keyboard notes, the 12 octave notes from C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, and B. And we're going to create a list called notes and set that equal to in square brackets 262 comma 277 comma 294 comma 311 comma 330 comma 349 comma 370 comma 392 comma 410 comma 440 comma 466 comma 494 so make sure you've got 12 values in there and those numbers are all correct then we're going to create a variable called tone underscore duration, and we'll set that equal to 0.2. Feel free to vary that if you want your notes to change in duration. And then we're also going to add rest underscore duration equal to 0.01. And again, feel free to vary that if you want longer rests between your notes. And then we're going to create our first function. We'll define it, def, as play underscore a underscore tone. And we're going to pass in two values, freak, f-r-e-q, comma, duration. Make sure those two values are between parentheses and you've got a colon at the end. And we're going to set tone dot duty underscore cycle equal to volume. Now, just as a note, the reason that you need to do that is you turned it off during the rest function below. Then we'll set tone dot frequency equal to freak, f-r-e-q, and time dot sleep in parentheses duration. So that's gonna play the note for the duration. Then below this, we're gonna create our function to play a rest. So we'll define it DEF as play underscore A underscore rest. And we're gonna pass in between parentheses duration. Make sure you put the colon at the end. And first we'll turn off our speaker with tone dot duty underscore cycle, setting that equal to zero. Then we'll set time dot sleep to in parentheses duration. So that's gonna give us a rest for that particular duration. And then below, we're just gonna iterate through all of the notes in the notes list. Remember our technique for note in notes colon, we're gonna play underscore a underscore tone, passing in note comma tone underscore duration. And then we're gonna play a rest, passing in rest duration. Then we can open up our serial console, then save this to the circuit pi volume as code.py. 
and for some reason my code's not executing here. This happens sometimes, so if that does happen to you, just click down in the REPL, then type Control C and Control D again, and there we see it saved and it played. You can click Save again to play it again, and now I'm going to change my volume to a thousand so you can hear how that sounds. And that's quite a bit louder, so I'm going to change it back. But good job, we've mastered tones on our microcontroller. Now it's time for a challenge. And before I tackle the challenge, I'm going to save this to my CircuitPython school folder and call it tones as notes so that I've got a backup, then close this up and reopen code.py on my CircuitPy volume. So here's your challenge. Use the MPR 121 12 key capacitive touch sensor that we learned about in the prior lecture to create a 12 key touch sensitive piano. And this should play all of the notes in an octave. So you can play the piano by touching the pads on the sensor. But if you'd like, you can print out the keyboard.pdf file at the following URL where we save our CircuitPython school files. That's at bit.ly circuitpython-school-files, all lowercase. Then you can use the printout of this to create a piano. You can clip your clips to the piano. And if you have copper tape, you can also use that to make a larger touch area that you can clip your clips to. Then modify the code that we just created and use what you know about tones and the NPR-121 sensor to create a touch piano that will play a different tone when any one of each of the 12 touch pads is touched. So what you want to do is you want to keep the tone playing when the pad is touched and you want to stop playing when no pads are being touched. So use the notes from the prior example from C all the way to B. You've got the frequency for the various different notes in your notes array. Give this a shot. Pause. And I know you can do it. And resume, and let's compare answers. So to work with the NPR 121 breakout, we're going to import Adafruit underscore NPR 121. Then we're going to create our I squared C object. We usually call that I2C. Set that equal to board dot, and in all caps, I2C, open and close parens. And then we're going to set up our touchpad object, which we'll call touchpad, touch underscore pad, equals Adafruit underscore NPR 121 dot, in all caps, MPR 121, passing in the I squared C object we just created. And then let's head down to the bottom of the code, and we're not going to use this for loop anymore. We're going to set up code that's very similar to what we used the last time we worked with this sensor. So we'll say while true, colon, and then we're going to set touch to false. So we'll initially assume that none of the pads have been touched. Then we'll look to see if any of those 12 pads is currently being touched. So we'll go through all of those with 4i in range 12, colon. And the reason we use an index instead of iterating through the list is because we're going to use this i in some other lists as well. So down below, we're going to say if touch underscore pad in brackets i dot value colon. Now remember, this is going to be true if a touch on one of the touch pads is detected. So underneath that, we'll say print, and in parentheses and in double quotes, we'll say you touched pad number sign, and then we'll put in curly braces, exclamation point, close quote, dot format, and then in parentheses, i close with one more parenthesis. And then underneath this, we'll say play a tone calling notes in brackets i. But we're going to make a change to the play a tone function because we no longer need a duration. We're going to continue to play this tone as long as a finger is on the touchpad. So up and play a tone, I'm going to delete the duration. I'm also going to delete the time sleep at the end, and that's our function. Then remember, under play a tone, we want to also flag that touched is true. So we'll say touched equals true. And then we'll outdent so that the if statement is going to be even with the for statement. And we'll say if touched equals equals false colon, then what we want to do is we want to shut off any sounds that might be playing. So I'm not going to call the play arrest function. I'm simply going to copy this statement here, tone.duty cycle. Remember when we set the duty cycle equal to zero, we shut off any sounds that are playing. Then since that's the only line of code that I need, I'm going to delete this entire function, play arrest. Then below the if statement, I'm going to paste in tone.duty cycle equals zero. Then I can get rid of any extra statements that were down below here. And this is our code. This should work. And I'm going to save this, you know, just so that you can hear this better. I'm also going to change my volume to 500 so that it picks up in the video. And now I'll save again, open the serial monitor. And here you see I've printed out the PDF. I've actually glued it to the back of some cardboard. And then I put some copper tape on each of the keys so that I have a larger touch surface. And I've clipped each clip in order 0 through 11 to the 12 keys on this keyboard. So here's my Arduino. I've breadboarded up the Stemma connector. I've attached that to the NPR 121 sensor. I've got 12 alligator clips to each of the pads, and the other ends of those clips are clipped to this piece of cardboard. So since I teach at Boston College, I'm going to play the BC fight song. So 
so sorry I'm not talented. But fun fact, that's the oldest college fight song in the country. For those outside the U.S., we play that at college football games. Why don't I give Sound of Music a try? All right, Julie Andrews has nothing to worry about. But you can see, I can touch all these different notes. The note remains pressed as long as I press a button. When I release my finger, then I'm not playing any sound. It's not really programmed to do chords, so you can see I can't play multiple notes really at the same time. And just to show we're comfortable working on multiple boards, let's set this up on our Cutie Pie RP2040 as well. Now the pins on this board are different, so let's wire up the tip of the audio jack to pin A0. And that means we have to refer to that pin when we set up our PWM out object in our code. And also remember, in our code, we're going to have to set up I squared C differently for this board. We need to import bus IO, then declare the I squared C object with bus IO dot I2C passing in board dot SEL1 and board dot SDA1. We learned about that in a previous video, so if you're new to this, you can go back and check that out. But other than that, everything we've done should work fine on this board. Code is entirely reusable. That's the beauty of CircuitPython. In fact, we don't even need to wire up a Stemma QT connector because that board has one built in. Now, before I run this on the Cutie Pie RP2040, I'm going to save this to my CircuitPython school folder, and I'm going to call this Arduino Nano Keyboard, just so that I remember what this file is. Then I've just plugged in my Cutie Pie, so I'm going to save this this file to the cutiepie as code.py and I'm just going to put a note up here that says cutiepie rp2040 and the code's going to work the exact same way but we do have to change how we set up i squared c and we're using a different pin for our speaker output so first where we set up the pwm out we're going to change board.d3 to board.a0 because I've plugged the tip of my speaker jack to pin a0 then I'm going to comment out the line where we create our I squared C object, and below we're going to enter what we need to use for the cutie pie. Now the cutie pie is sort of a rare bird. Most CircuitPython boards will use the line that we have above, but for the cutie pie we'll say I2C equals, and we use bus IO dot capital I two capital C, and in parentheses we need to pass in board dot SCL one all caps comma board dot SDA one all caps, and we learned about that a couple of videos back. And since we're using bus IO, let's make sure that we import bus IO. Then we can save, open the serial monitor. Our sensor's in the Stemma QT port of the Cutie Pie, and we've got our speaker into A0. And oh, will you look at that? We've got our keyboard working, touch sensitive on two different kinds of CircuitPython boards. You're armed with enough knowledge that if you've got another CircuitPython board that supports PWM out, you can probably go ahead and make this happen on that board too. But you piano playing Python programmer, I hope you feel good about more big learning. We covered how to use PWM to play tones. We changed the notes by changing frequency and we changed the volume by changing the duty cycle. We learned how to iterate through sequences. We played all the notes in the middle octave. We combined this new knowledge with our previous capacitive touch skills so that we could create a one octave capacitive touch piano keyboard. And we did this build on both an Arduino Nano RP2040 and on an Adafruit Cutie Pie RP2040. Play yourself a celebratory tune, keep at it, and get excited for more goodness to come.